Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and those of you who are not Muslim, I greet you all with the universal grace of Islam, and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Today I'm going to be dealing with aspect of Islam that deals with numbers and, 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 and the science of numbers. You know, uh, numbers are very important in life. Today, if you look at the number one, number one is so important in Islam because we always establish the Tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is one, and Allah does not need any board of directors. He doesn't need mother. He doesn't need father. He is the one, the sole creator that deserves to be worshipped, the creator of heaven and earth. And so today, numbers are part and parcel of our life today. Without numbers, we can do a lot of things that we do in terms of science. Numbers play a major role in terms of calculations. In Islam, Allah mentioned a lot of uh, importance of numbers, especially we use the number, let's say, every, you know, in the month of Ramadan. We calculate and count you know, the month that falls within the scope of Ramadan. So we know how many days we did. Allah also mentioned about numbers in terms of, uh, you know, the days that you calculate to go to Hajj. The women especially, when they enter into their courses of menstruation, they use numbers to calculate. So numbers are very, very important uh, in Islam. With numbers, you would know the measurement. Allah said he used numbers to calculate and balance the equilibrium of the earth. And so therefore, there is no disproportion in numbers. Today, you know, physical science and natural science all entails numbers. Our ability to land on the moon specified on numbers. Our intelligence have been drawn around physics, mathematics, you know, uh, 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 all these sciences. And so today, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for the Quran. The Quran is not to be left alone also. In the Quran 74 verse 30, Allah mentioned something like Alayha tis atta ashara. On this is number 19. And number 19 is a prime number. It's a number that is so very hard. Because if I ask you to choose a number, to make some calculation with it, you're not going to choose uh, 19 or 17. You know, the odd numbers, you prefer uh, 2, 4, 6, stuff like that. People are you know, having difficulties in calculations, especially using, you know, mathematics. Uh, we do algebra, we do all this, uh, you know, uh, intricate sciences using, you know, the calculus, and these are all part of numbers. And so, uh, in the Quran, we know today that the Greeks have understand the prime number 19 is the all in all of all numbers. Any number within uh, that 19 is the soluble number. So if you have 1,000, the zero is just a concept. But number one and the number nine are the most important, you know, uh, uh, figures in calculations. So the Greeks call number one alpha, and they call the number nine omega. In Arabic also, the number one is awwal, which is my name, and akhir is the end number, which is one and nine. And so today, one of the mysteries of Islam in the Quran is the mathematical code that is embedded in the Quran. Actually, the number 19 somehow became a codified number within the Quran. Because in Quran 74 verse 30, Allah said, Alayha tis atta ashara. On this is number 19. And number 19 is a very powerful number. Now, watch some of the mysteries and mathematical order in the Quran using number 19. Can you imagine the messenger Muhammad living in the desert, far from civilization, without any computerization, be able to use the number 19 as a framework in terms of, uh, you know, bringing all these uh, 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 calculations together. It is impossible what he did, if he did it. But we know it is Allah who revealed unto him bit and bits of his knowledge, which compromised, uh, which uh, comprise what we call the Quran today. Now, in the Quran, we have 114 chapters. Each and every one of them begin with that formula, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, scientists begin to wonder as to the number 114 chapters, because 114 is a multiple of number 19. 19 times 4, 114. 
And then if you look at the word Bi'ism, appeared in the Quran, interspersed by itself, 19 times. The word Allah, without the Rabb, Ar-Rahman, and all that kind of stuff, the word Allah appeared in the Quran, 2,698. And this number is a multiple of number 19. A miracle of a miracle. The word Ar-Rahman appeared in the Quran 57 times. 19 times 2. 57. The word Ar-Rahim appeared in the Quran 114 times. 19 times 4. 114. The word Al-Quran appeared in the Quran 58 times. But 58 is not a multiple of number 19. 57 is a multiple of number 19. Why 58? Because only one part in the Quran, Allah said, if they have any other Quran or of which they receive their information from, let them bring it. If they have any other Quran. So that other Quran is not part of the Quran. So actually the Quran mentioned the word Quran in the Quran 57 times. 19 times 3, 57. But there is one surah or chapter in the Quran that I've no basmallah. Surah Al Tawbah, the chapter of immunity. It doesn't have Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So if that is the case, all the formula of 114 of number 19 will collapse. But watch where Allah created a problem and He solved the problem again. Do you remember also that in the Quran we have one chapter of the Quran? Surah to Naman, it has two basmallah. Surah to Naman is Quran 27 verse 30, where Allah said, Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillahir rahmanir rahim. So in fact, that surah, Surah to Naman, contains two basmallah. So we have to take that basmallah and give it to Surah to uh, uh, Quran chapter uh, 9, which has no basmallah. The problem is solved. The problem did not stop right there. If you count from the chapter of the Quran, Bara'a, chapter 9, which has no basmallah. If you count from that chapter to the chapter that have two basmallah, you have 19 chapters in between them. Alayha tis atta ashara. On this is number 19. Did you see the miracle? Now, if you count again from the surah or the chapter that have no basmallah, that will be Quran chapter 9. So you write number 9, Quran chapter 10, you write 10, chapter 11, you know, you write 11, chapter 12, you write 12, and you do the same thing till you reach Quran 27. The number you will have, put them together, you will have 342. And 342 divided by 19 will give you 18. In other words, 342 is a multiple of number 19. The miracle did not stop right there. That chapter with two basmallah, Surah Al, you know, that Quran 27, verse 30. Quran 27, write it down. Verse 30, where it says, إِنَّهُ مِنْ سُلَيْمَانِ وَإِنَّهُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ So 27 plus 30, will give you 57. 57 is also a multiple of number 19. Allahu Akbar. Now, the first revelation that Muhammad received in the Mount of Light, Quran 96. That surah contained 19 verses also. The first word that was given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was Iqra'a up to Malam Ya'alam. First five verses. Now, Look at my finger. Allah gave Muhammad 19 Arabic words. Ikra bi ismi rabbikal lazi halaka halakal insan min alaka ikra wa rabbukal akram allazi allama bil kalam allama al insan ma lam ya'lam. 19 words Muhammad received as the first revelation. Now from ikra up to ma lam ya'lam you have 73 Arabic letters, which is also a multiple of number 19. 
Now, if you count from Quran 96, which is the first revelation, to the end of the Quran, you have 19 chapters in between them. Now, if a woman is pregnant, it takes her 38 weeks. 19 times 2, 38, which is also a multiple of number 19, or 266. Two sixes is also a multiple of number 19. Every 19 years, the solar system realigns itself. 19 years. You and I have 209 bones. 209 is also a multiple of number 19. Alayha tis atta ashara. So Quran 74, verse 30, Allah said, over it. It's number 19. Then it mentioned the number of angels that are guarding the hellfire. I mean, or they are guarding the fire. Then towards the end, Allah said, if the Jewish hear about this 19, they will be dumb strong. And if the Christians also see what the 19 entails, they will be questioning, what is all this about 19? And the Muslim, if we hear this, our faith will increase. Then Allah said towards the end, this is one of the potent of number 19. One of the potent of our miracle in number 19. So number 19 is one of the hardest number. Why would Muhammad choose number 19? First of all, he have to write each and every verse and then memorize it. How many verses in the Quran? Thousands of them. How could that be? You need a computer to print or write or type down everything and then you memorize it and you place them in certain key position that will make sense to be consistent in harmony with number 19. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. Even our Salat, Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr, you put them together, you have 17 units. And if you add the two units in Friday Salat, you have 19. It is very complex. This is just the basics. But if I get deep into the intricate of number 19, you will be shocked as to how could a man in the desert who have never gone to school be able to make such profound statement that is so mathematical. This is one of the miracles of the Quran. So the computer was asked, is it possible for anyone to write a book like the Quran? The computer said, yes, it's possible. But that person must be able to count the sand at seashore. If you could count the sand at seashore, then it is possible also to write the Quran, meaning it is impossible. How could you count the sand at seashore? Now, if you grab a sun at seashore in your hand, how could you count it? How long is it going to take you? How about the one in the bucket? How about, I mean, I mean, if you take a truck and get, you know, get the, the sun at seashore, could you count it? No. In other words, it is infinitesimal. No human being will be able to write a book like the Quran. That is why Allah said, if the whole of mankind and jinn were to come together to write a book like the Quran, they would not be able to do it even if they support themselves from each and every angle. The Quran is a mystery. The Quran is a standing miracle. The Quran is a book that challenges each and every knowledge on the face of the earth. That is the ultimate miracle given to Muhammad because today, the miracle of Moses can never be repeated for it to function. Impossible. But we believe as a matter of faith that Allah has given Moses. That was meant for that time. The miracle of Isa ibn Maryam or Jesus, you can't invoke a dead person to come back to life. It's impossible, but we believe Jesus raised those who have died by the power of God. You can do that today. It was meant for that time so that those whom the world rich could believe that this man or this prophet is a messenger sent by Allah. It is one of their miracles. Each and every prophet was given a miracle. So when the Quran came, that was the height of eloquence, the height of eloquence in terms of prose, in terms of words. And Muhammad is unlettered, never been to school. The Quran confirmed that. 
that he's never been there. Had it been his dinner all that time, they would have a reason to believe that he is someone that is educated. So mankind have to account for the fact that how could a man living in the desert, far from civilization, be able to quantify in his own mind this book that have revolutionized the concept of education, of mathematics, of numbers. In fact, in the, you know, uh, uh, the 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, up to 16th centuries, the Muslims were, uh, were, were the leaders in terms of science. People in Europe live in cages. It was after the Renaissance that the, the, the Muslim ushered the whole world into thinking. Back then, if you believe in any science or miracle, you will be thrown to the gallows by animals to eat you. But the Quran was bubbling with information. Allah is making you to think. Don't you look at the Quran with care? Had it been someone write it, there would have been so much inconsistency. Indeed, the Quran is not, you know, inconsistency. There is so many, so much harmony in the Quran. People think of how they want the Quran to be. Every book was written differently. The Quran is the only different book on the face of the earth, memorized by everybody. Millions of people. So therefore, it is an outstanding miracle that Allah has given Muhammad. If there is a need to do the second part of this, we will do it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.